Tonight, the latest on Tropical Storm Franklin and Pacific developments on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for August 24. So, the tropics still active right now with Franklin, the star in the Atlantic, moving away from Hispaniola and developments in the western Pacific, two tropical cyclones have formed, one of them now deemed to be a tropical storm near the Philippines. 44 storms have formed so far this year. In the Atlantic then, it's day 85 of hurricane season and we're still looking at Franklin and the remnants of Emily for potential re-intensification or reformation I should say, and that's actually looking quite likely. And a 30% chance behind all of that in the eastern Atlantic there. Still tropical storm warnings in effect. In the eastern Pacific, we've got three systems still in the uh, eastern part of the basin, uh, two of them at moderate chances, the one on the eastern side still at minimum chances, and the remnants of Fernanda are still traceable as well. Uh, you'll see that a little bit later on. In the western Pacific then, not, just, not only have we got those two new cyclones, which look like they're going to be interesting uh, counterparts there, but also a 40% area of interest uh, that is likely to, uh, could develop later down the line, um, sort of in that same area near the Mariana Islands. 9W is likely to drift around in the same general area for quite some time and could be quite a long lasting system but not very far moving. And in the Indian Ocean we've still got quite a bit of monsoonal activity all around the Bay of Bengal region through Indochina. So here's the latest on Franklin right now. Tropical storm warnings still in effect for the Dominican Republic. They might be retreating at the latest update from National Hurricane Center, but we'll wait and see. Tropical storm warnings still for the Turks and Caicos Islands as expected. It is just 46 kilometers from Preda Plata, but moving away. 169 from Balfour Town, 179 from Coburn Town, both in the Turks and Caicos. 1465 from Bermuda, and 2805 from Halifax in Nova Scotia which may well be its next stop after Bermuda. 9W then looks like this and uh, it's quite close to the Philippines, 313 kilometers from Basco, 331 from Idbayat, 341 from Santa Ana, 435 from Tukagaro, and 498 from Taitung in, the, in Taiwan. Uh, this system at the moment drifting ever so slightly northwards by the looks of things uh, but generally we're expecting a movement south uh, dipping down and then turning back towards the north again towards the end of the forecast period a very difficult one to predict this one but it does have serious potential for intensification so here's the satellite image we're showing all three systems actually that 40 percent in the middle there as well starting to take shape on the right hand side we've got that depression which was just starting to bubble up there center of circulation has been tough to pinned down but it looks like it may have one now and then of course this storm on the left hand side um, potentially at 35 knots I'm not so sure myself uh, particularly with that decrease in convection but it has been looking decent in satellite imagery now here you can see Fernanda there on the left hand side what's left of it just a naked swirl to the southwest of Hawaii moving on east to the tropical zones here and you can sort of see the infancy of these maybe three disturbed disturbances that are starting to develop, you sort of see three columns of cloud there. As we move on to the Atlantic, of course it's night time now, so we have to switch over to the uh, infrared to take a look at what's going on with the Atlantic developments. So there's Franklin, and you can see it's uh, still looking okay, uh, it's done well to hold on to tropical storm status in my view, uh, and it's actually blowing up a little bit of convection on that weak left hand side, so I think it's looking in, in fair shape. Uh, still actually you can see the remnants of Gert there to the east of the uh, Lesser Antilles. Of course Emily's up there and that other area of interest on that right hand side. So it's still an active Atlantic right now but Franklin is the only system that is recognized as a tropical cyclone but still four of them in the act right now. Sea surface temperatures in the eastern Pacific look like this, a little bit of a coolness caused by Hillary last week but the uh, area near Mexico looking pretty good, 30 degrees plus. 
The Atlantic Gulf of Mexico is still piping hot, as is the Gulf Stream up the U.S. East Coast, extending outwards over the, over the uh, Western Atlantic, where Franklin's heading towards 30 degrees. Caribbean still a little bit cooler in the south there, but towards the north near Cuba, uh, much warmer, over 30 degrees, and in the main region of the Atlantic, also looking good in the lower latitudes. Western Pacific looking good in large areas now, over 30 degrees, over what must be thousands of square miles of ocean there, and in the South China Sea, a lot there as well, and extending up into the East China Sea as well, a serious amount there, 29 degrees or higher. North Indian Ocean looking okay in the Bay of Bengal, generally 28 to 29 degrees. Uh, Arabian Sea is a little bit half and half there, but it has been warming a little bit off the west coast of India. Southwest Indian Ocean in its off season, but temperatures are holding now by the looks of things and it will probably start to rise again soon. Australian region as well, a few cool points there. Coral Sea especially, and in the South Pacific, things still looking pretty chill here with a cold area extending further up French Polynesia and near Vanuatu. Sea surface temperature anomalies look like this. The western Pacific is mostly above average, but there's a few little spots that are below. In the eastern Pacific, as well as that line extending from uh, Hawaii eastwards and Hillary, you can see its path there in the coolness. Uh, but the rest of the eastern Pacific looking good. The Atlantic above average quite significantly, although one tiny pinprick of coolness there where Franklin has been before it made landfall in Hispaniola. Uh, but generally, it is still well above average. You'll also note there's a big gap now in the oceanic heat content south of Haiti where Franklin has been close to white trek over there, but I assume it was responsible for that. Eastern Pacific still looking okay off the coast of Mexico, and Western Pacific, a large trail there of course of very high energy amounts including over both of those systems right now. So let's take a look at the GFS computer model for the next five days. The Atlantic, first of all, you can clearly see Franklin there. It meanders around towards the east and then eventually a turn north, looking a little bit more clear cut than what we saw in last night's bulletin. And then it reaches hurricane status and maybe a bit stronger than that as well, probably getting to category two within five days. That's the National Hurricane Center's forecast as well. Emily regenerating as it shoots up northwards and the other area of interest struggling probably doesn't get there. Eastern Pacific, watch out for these three systems. The first one there near Central America still could become a tropical storm as it moves into Guatemala now by the looks of things. The second one moving up towards the northwest from the western region over there becoming possibly a hurricane. And the third one GFS has majorly backed off upon uh, the one that had the highest chance. And it still does because of continuity, but we're giving it 50% right now as it heads towards the coast of Mexico. National Hurricane Center fairly confident. Looks like some still does form but it's gone way off in terms of expectations clear to see 9w there on the left hand side and look at it blowing up as it sinks southwards there becoming a very powerful storm and then these two other systems on the right hand side the one the first one that moves off the scene quite quickly devolves by the looks of things as well and the second one moves up into its place there uh, moving close to the mariana islands and then off towards the northeast becoming a very large system Rain expectations from all of these systems also looks like this. Um, first of all, 9W, which we saw big expectations from the GFS model there, deepening to probably category three or category four intensity within five days, uh, moving off south and then doing a little loop there and then towards the northwest. So look at the amount of rainfall in that, getting up towards 18 inches, 450 millimeters for the Batanas Islands, if that forecast came to fruition, where it stalls briefly 36 inches and the Philippines rainfall is enhanced as well along the west coast now the other systems will also deliver a lot of rain too five inches there in guam uh, and up the mariana islands some areas at sea though quite close to those islands getting up to 31 inches and five inches there in yap as well five inches being the operative number by the looks of things that's 125 millimeters Longer range in the Atlantic, well we look at Franklin there continuing on its way northeastwards. Uh, Bermuda probably gets tropical storm force winds and that is actually probably a landfall there on the eastern tip of Newfoundland. So that could potentially be a dangerous storm for Atlantic Canada there uh, with a substantial category one landfall at least by the looks of things. Uh, not the largest storm we've ever seen so um, not as worrying as maybe an Igor or some of the more recent storms but it still looks quite powerful there. Uh, and 
then behind that maybe one or two little systems there but nothing much in the signals now here is this hurricane moving along the eastern pacific just showing off its progress really it doesn't actually affect any land there it is gradually weakening over those colder waters and then stalling that really does finish it off as it starts to move gradually northwards certainly not a threat to california if anyone's having nightmares after hillary and no threat to hawaii either looks like a category one peak being forecasted that of course is day five to ten and in the western pacific what happens with that typhoon then we saw it early on the rain it shoots on through the batanas islands peaks there by the looks of things as category four and then um assaults Taiwan on the southern side and actually survives uh, those mountains as a weak tropical cyclone and look at the other system very very large that's that's 40 percent system that we're watching enormous look at it go and getting quite strong as well maybe getting close to category three status briefly and then strengthening again near landfall in Japan that would be a pretty of a nice nightmare situation there for large parts of central and eastern Japan Scan the barcode and that will take you through to the Force 13 merch store where we have all of our usual items and our full season and individual storm animations. And of course, we are still waiting for it. Hone, that shirt is still in stock. In the silly range, day 10 to 16, looking out at the Atlantic again for some more possible developments. One in the mid-Atlantic there, another one that's forming from an African wave that becomes a more potent tropical cyclone, eventually a hurricane there. And towards the end of that 16-day period, a system forming in the Gulf of Mexico and could end up getting closer to Florida. Now, of course, this is quite different to what we saw in yesterday's update. So really, we can't put very much into this, um, even though I'm sure people will be looking out at all of this and saying, well, there's going to be a storm near Florida this is very long range and I don't see anything in the near future Western Pacific that typhoon uh, continues to roar upwards through Japan uh, and then you can see 9W which is still surviving into the long range there and still continuing very weak at this point but you can still see that circulation in the last frame 16 days out one or two other systems try to form a little bit of a soup that goes on there in the Western Pacific uh, but it doesn't look like anything else gains traction that of course is still very very far out up towards the almost towards the middle of September actually now speaking of which we'll be on our eastern tour in early and mid September we will be in Athens Singapore Cebu and Hong Kong so if you want to join in with us you can uh, meet and greet and do whatever in person and to do that you can contact us by email or through any of our social media outlets you can also chat to us on Discord, and with 3,600 other weather watchers around the world, discord.gg slash force13 for tropical weather and general weather chat. On this day, a day that I fondly remember, sort of, uh, Hurricane Irene was reaching its peak intensity on August 24th, 2011. Um, I remember that particular week quite vividly. We also had Tropical Storm Nanmadol, which was just forming near the Philippines, would go on to become a very powerful super typhoon, and Tropical Depression 15W, which had just formed to the east there as well, so actually quite a similar configuration to what we have right now, although the storms are in slightly different locations and it went on to take different tracks. Well then, uh, back to today and 12 years since Irene, the next name in the Atlantic storm is a completely different eye name, Idalia. In the Eastern Pacific, the next name is Irwin. And in the Central Pacific, of course, it is still Hone. And I'll be wearing a wiener suit when that forms. In the Western Pacific, the next name is Sayola. And by our reckoning, that name should be used by now. In the North Indian Ocean, the next name is Tej. We are code yellow right now with 44 storms to this year's naming not naming this but this year's tally the average per year is 92 in the australian region the next name is jasper southwest indian ocean alvaro and south pacific lola that's all from tonight's tropical weather bulletin we'll be back again tomorrow night <laughs>